camp, and uh, we saw a lot of kids get saved, and we praise the Lord for that. It was good, and all our kids here now getting ready, fired up for youth camp. Uh, 2019, on, the, on um, the 8th of July, and we're really excited about it. Parents, uh, put your heart and soul in prayer for youth camp. It might be the, the week that steers on their lives in one way or the other. I know people, I know people right now, right now, that are in the ministry preaching because one week of camp changed their life. My cousin Sam over yonder, Sam Bellini down hidden out. One night of camp changed his life. I'll never forget that. It was over in Bryson City before we even had a youth camp to go to. And, uh, and so camp is extremely important. In my opinion, youth camp does more for kids than anything else that the church can do for them. So uh, as far as changing their life long term. Psalm 107 tonight, I want to look at, uh, first of all, verse 8. Psalm 107, verse 8. It said this, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Not the man's goodness, God's goodness. And his wonderful works to the children of men. Now, verse 15. 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Now, verse number 21, again. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. Three times in that chapter, many other times in the Bible, David said, men ought to praise the Lord for his goodness. I'm going to talk about the goodness of God just a minute tonight. Just uh, 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 the goodness of God. As you learn, as you grow older, you, you learn more and more and more about the goodness of God. And you learn more that, my goodness, I didn't realize this when I was young, but God's been good to me. And the older I get, the more I realize how good God's been to me. And, and you will too. Sort of like that little boy, all little boys, all little bitty boys hate girls, you know, they used to did. They're a little weird nowadays, but when you when you're little used to when you was that high, everybody, all the boys belong to the He Man Woman Hater Club. And and they said, Shoo, girls, you remember that? When we was growing up, shoo, girl, he likes a girl. Uh, uh. Well, you know, as you get a little bit older, something I don't know. They, they get nicer or something changes. But those two little boys went down there started getting up, uh, you know, about uh, 11, 11 years old, 10, 11 years old. About that time, a pretty little girl walked by, and he punched his buddy, and he said, you know what? When I quit hating girls, she's going to be the one I quit hating first. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, 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 you change your mind a little bit about stuff like that. But did you know that's the same way with the goodness of God? You don't realize the goodness of God so much when you're young. But as you begin to get older and you look back and you see the things you've been through and you see the trials you've faced and you see the battles you've come through and sometimes you didn't think he's going to make it through them, then you can say like David, we ought to praise the Lord for his goodness. Amen? I, I'm not going to preach long tonight, just give you a little thought. And I want to say, first of all, uh, we, ought to, we ought to... uh Praise God for, uh, for our families, just for our families. If you've got a family, you ought to think, that's the goodness of God that allowed you to have a family. A lot of people don't have family as far as physical, physical, uh, biological parents or brother and sister in Christ. Um, these statements, uh, Brandon was preaching in the junior church this morning and Kelly was back there with them and I don't know how it come up but some of the kids just in our junior church these are our bus kids that were here this morning made these statements just popped out this morning just popped out one of them said quote my daddy drinks a lot second one I don't even know who my daddy is here this morning next my daddy tied my brother to a chair. Oh, that was here this morning, back in our junior church. You wouldn't believe. You would not believe. I, because 
because sometimes tell them they come more than that. I wouldn't tell you some of the stories, some of the places, some, some of our kids in our, they say right now, uh, you know, we have these kids here that we keep, uh, Frankster and, and, uh, and Marty there and, and, uh, and, and Carrie and, uh, and you know, uh, 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 homeless kids like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we took them in and they, they come into our home. And you know what? There are t- over 250 foster children in foster care in Burke County today. That's a lot for a town this small. That's a lot. And, and the other day, the, the lady called my wife from DSS. There were four babies in this county with nowhere to go. I'm saying that not to make anybody sad. I'm saying that to say this. If you've got a mama or a daddy or a family, you ought to thank God for his goodness to you. God's been good to you. I said, God's been good to you. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, you ought to, I, today we went to eat and, and we took Brother Wayne with us and Brother Wayne's just like part of our family and, and I was sitting there and all my girls got me cards and Ethan and Marty and Frankie got me a card, all six young'uns. And, uh, and we were sitting there eating. I was sitting there and I thought, you know what? The cards are not what makes it special. The gifts, uh, Carrie bought me this shirt and tie. I've tried it out here tonight. Uh, I, 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 that's not what makes it special. What makes it special is family. Having a family. Having a family. Having a family. Listen, my mom and dad both done gone this evening. Daddy went home to be the Lord uh, way back in 1990. My mom went home to be the Lord in 2011. I would love to see them again. If you've got your family, you ought to thank the Lord for his goodness. Amen? That's right. Thank the Lord for His goodness. Thank the Lord for His goodness. Thank the Lord for His goodness. There's a a girl come to me one time uh, several years ago. She's 13 years old. And we sat down in my office and she told about her mother had married some guy and uh, uh, they brought boys in and and one brother had abused her for years, and then as soon as he got old enough and moved out, the other brother uh, began to abuse her, uh, same thing, and it broke my heart. I thought, my Lord, my Lord, listen, if you didn't have to grow up in a family like that, if you, if you had a good family, if you had a good family that took you to church and honored God, you ought to thank the Lord for your family. God's been good to you. God's been good to me by letting us have a family. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right. Uh, kids uh, kids are, are, are kidnapped by these satanic cults and, and they uh, uh, abuse them and they, and they tell them, they say, now you've got a dog inside you and if you ever tell what happened here, that dog will begin to, will begin to fight on the inside you and it'll eat you from the inside. And so if that kid ever starts to tell, they get a nervous feeling and their stomach begins to hurt and they they think it's that dog on the inside of them going to kill them. You think about the stories that kids have in this country. If your mom and dad took you to church, you're a rich person. If your parents took you, taught you about Jesus Christ, you're a rich person. I'm telling you this evening, people, God, the goodness of God by letting us have a family is extremely good this evening. That's right. Number two, I want to say something else this evening. Uh, God's good to you by giving you your health. God's good to you by giving you your health. Amen? God's good to you by giving you your health. Thousands of people are in rehab. I went down there to that uh, hospital yesterday and my, 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 room after room after room, down there in Charlotte, room after room. I was just in the CV cardiovascular ICU unit and there were just people in there mostly with heart heart troubles of one kind or another and see them in there with tubes going down their, their throat and everything. I got to thinking, I got to thinking this week. Monday morning, I got up real early Monday morning after we had church here Sunday night. We had all of our clothes packed. We packed 13 people in that van. We took off down to Georgia, 
drove all day, got to Georgia. I took the kids to the camp, dropped them off. They got me a, a little motel room uh, out the road at a Motel 6 but, so I could have some place to study and pray and, uh, and went back to my room. And I, I laid down for a minute. I prayed. I changed clothes. I went and preached. We done the same thing Tuesday. Done the same thing Wednesday. I went and run in the gym down there three days this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning, and and then I I, I I got to preach every night. We got to we, we, we went to eat. We had food. We had good food. We had good fellowship. Drove all the way home Thursday night. Got home Thursday night, and I was a little sleepy. And then me and Ethan and and uh, Zach Zach spent the night with us. Went up and played early ball over at the gym at six o'clock. Played ball with those guys. Run hard. Come home. Uh, got uh, took that van back, right, that mowed all the grass, we mowed all the grass they done weed eating, moved the refrigerator into my mom's house, worked all day trying to get caught up worked on the swimming pool, worked all that got in the bed late, got up yesterday morning early, came down here, painted the bus, went visiting Charlotte, got back home yesterday evening, made five radio programs studied and prayed to preach I then got up at six this morning and been going all day today, I said hallelujah, God's been good to me Amen. That's for all you people that meet the preacher on Sunday morning and say, got it made. Don't work but one day a week. <laughs> always meet some smart aleck like that. That's got these, uh, well, I like that. Let me tell you something, brother. Uh, you say, well, you didn't have to go play ball. No, I didn't. But Lord in mercy, I had a great week and God was good to me. I, my mom always said, Danny, you ain't always going to be able to do this. I said, you're exactly right. So by the grace of God, I'm going to do it while I can. While I can, I'm going to preach. While I can, I'm going to run. While I can, I'm going to raise my hand. While I can, I'm going to praise God. While you can, you better praise God for your health. If you can see, if you can see, you ought to thank the Lord for it. I heard about this guy who read the Bible all the time and he loved the Bible. Loved the Bible, loved the Bible. You've heard me tell this story before. I always think about it. And, he, and he's worked in a chemical plant and this had an explosion and that chemical blew up and hit him in the face and blinded all, both his eyes and ruined, killed all the nerves. Uh, I mean just scarred his hands and, and it ruined, killed all the nerves. I think I killed a nerve in my little finger when I sawed my hand because it feels weird right there. It, ain't, it don't feel right. And, uh, but anyway, he had no feeling in his hands and he, both eyes were, were blind and he loved the Bible. He loved to read the Bible. And, and the last thing they said was, he said, the thing that hurts me the worst, I lost my sight, I can't see trees, can't see my kids, can't see nothing, I can't read the Bible. And they got him one of them Bibles that has, has the uh, braille, you know, the raised type, and he put, couldn't feel it. He said, I can't read the Bible. And they said, you're never going to read the Bible again. And he said, but can I kiss it? And right before they took it away, he went, and he said, when he did that, he said he felt it. He had a little place on the end of his tongue. He could feel it. And he took his tongue and learned to recognize those letters and read that Bible. And the story that I read said, get down just one hour on this, Dylan. The story that I read said that that man had read the whole Bible through four times, running his tongue over them letters. And what was that? Some of y'all was saying that you, you couldn't understand the words and you was too busy. Four times with his tongue, brother. You know what? I thank God for these two eyes right here. That I can see. Feet that I can walk. Hands that I can handle. An appetite. You know what I do? I'll let you in on a little secret prayer, Brother Danny. I don't just say, Lord, bless my health and keep me healthy. I say, I say Lord, help me in all that stuff they ain't even discovered yet, please. You know, we didn't know we had a nervous system hundreds of years ago. We didn't know about the digestive system hundreds of years ago. So instead of saying, Lord, let my heart beat, let my stomach work all right, let my legs keep moving, and I'm, you know, I can feel as I get older, I'm, I've got a few little, I'm like a car, you know. I, I still run good, but I got a lot of miles on me. And, and, all, and, and there's some dents here and there. I got some scars. I got some dents. I got some imperfection. But I'm telling you, I say, Lord, 
help, help my, my mind, my thoughts, God, stuff that scientists and doctors don't even know about, help me in those things too. Lord, have mercy on me. And if God has given you health, if you're able to get up and walk, listen people, if, if you're able to raise your hands, you ought to raise your hands and praise the Lord. The day may come when you can't raise your hands. The day may come when you're in a, in a, in a wheelchair over there and one of them rest home and you can't and you'll look back and say, I'd give anything in the world if I could go to church one more time. I'd stand up and raise my hand. Well, now's the time to do it. You can't do it then. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness just for our help. Just for our help. And lastly, that men would praise the Lord for his great salvation. Have you thought lately how thankful you ought to be because you know the truth and the right God and the right way to God, the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, now I, I know we're living in a, a, a multicultural world and society now where they're trying to mix everything together, make all religions the same and all that. I, I told you about that uh, doctor I played ball with the other day and I began to try to witness to him and he, he's a Hindu. And uh, he basically said that it didn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. And basically what he was saying was, if he's sincere in his religion, he'll go to heaven. If I'm sincere in my religion, I'll go to heaven. And if somebody's sincere in another religion, they'll go to heaven. And I said, there ain't one thing wrong with that. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. Now, if Jesus Christ was telling the truth, all other religions are false. They can't all be right. If you can go to heaven apart from or without Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was deluded and not the man that we, think, we believe he is. And I say that respectfully. I know he's who he said he was. I know Jesus is real. He said, you can't come to the Father but by me. You say, well, what about a Hindu who's just as sincere as you are? They're wrong. Not, and, and I'm not bragging about me. You ought to thank God that he lets you find the truth. We're no better than nobody else. We're, no, we're nothing special. As a matter of fact, there's people in other religions probably more dedicated, more sincere than some of us. You ought to just once in a while say, oh, that we had praised God for his goodness of letting us know the truth. Now, I'll tell you something. I've always believed in demonic possession, and I know it's true. It's in the Bible. But honestly, here lately, I have seen in the last three weeks people that make me really question that they're not just sinning that something other spirits working in them I was in Kentucky example number one coming home from Kentucky the other night I stopped in a convenience store late at night to fill up with gas give me something to drink before I got on the long road home by myself went in a store people, two or three people lined up you can run into some characters at them convenience stores at, at late, late at night. You can. And there was a girl standing in front of me. She looked like she's about 28 years old, blonde hair on top of her head. And she turned around and went, hello. I said, hey, how you doing? I have my tracks armed and ready. I was ready to give her a track. I said, here you go. I got something for you to read. And this girl had the strangest look on her face. And she had a funny accent. And I said, where are you from? Uh, she said, Russia and Germany. And I said, is that, is that what language you speak? And she said, I can speak Russian and German. And then she started talking about start speaking German backwards. And I've always known that you don't, you watch out for people who start talking backwards. I mean, you know, that's the devil. You know, Anton LaVey, the pastor of the satanic church in San Francisco, said that what you do to initiate into Satanism is you learn how to speak, read, talk, and things backwards. That's why I'm always, when I, I meet some girl, her name's Natasha. They say, I'd say, okay, that's ah, uh, Satan, backwards, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and they have all kinds of things like that, and I think, oh, my goodness. And she started looking at me, and I, she said, you're an evangelist. 
You're an evangelist. And I said, well, uh, yeah, I guess I am. I am an evangelist. I'm a pastor, but I do the work of evangelist. She said, but, but you're a special evangelist. I said, uh-huh. And there was people standing around, and she's out in the parking lot when I came out. And she said, you're special. It was meant for me to, to meet you tonight. And I started getting scared. Listen, people, that ain't normal talk. And then she started talking about angels and demons. Smoking pot don't make you do that. Uh, uh, Chris, meth, I don't think meth, it probably opens the door. But she started talking about, and these angels come in, it's, it's more than just Jesus Christ. And she started talking about, I said, I can't, I ain't do this here at 1130 at night. And I, I've got to get home. And I, 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 I want to put my hand on her and say, come out of her in Jesus' name. But I didn't. <laughs> I chickened out. Uh, but uh, uh, but I, 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 looked, I looked around and she started, she had this, this look on her face. I can't do it like she was doing it. Something was shining out of her, buddy. Then, the other day, Brian's my witness. He was there. He's at the motel with me. Lady was leaning over the thing, the rail at the motel, like this, to call to passerbys. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. That's Proverbs, you know. I mean, that's, that's, you ought to seen her. You ought to seen her. Her, her. You can see her skin from there to there, her short shirt, and she was on like, like that. Again, I come by. She said, "Hey." I always taught my girls, never speak to a man first. A woman, girl, should never speak to a man first. If he says, hey, are you today? Say, fine, how are you? And don't make eye contact. You think that's silly, old-fashioned, whatever you want to. I know what I'm talking about. She said, hey. I said, hey, how are you? I got her a track. I said, I'm a preacher, and Jesus is your best friend. That's what I tell me. Jesus is your best friend, ma'am. I went down and put some stuff in the van. Stay down there a minute. I come back up, and she said, hey, Jesus. I didn't say I was Jesus. <laughs> I said, Jesus is your best friend. I ain't Jesus. And brother, she started, and she said, but the angels, and then, and you know the woman that rides the beast. I said, alcohol didn't make you think that. She started talking angels and demons and stuff. She started, honest to goodness, she couldn't put, I thought she was going to kiss me. Honest, I did. I was ready to knock her head off if she took me. And, she, she, and you're not supposed to hit a woman. I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't. But she started coming toward me and put her hand on me. And I just went back like that. Ask him, is that, is that not the truth? I went, yeah. She was hitting on Brian. No, you was flirting. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He went. He was. He, he went out. I told. I said, Brian, go out there and witness that woman. I said, I let him deal with her. And I'm telling you, people, that woman had more than just sin in her. Look, sin makes you say, Yeah, come on, let's smoke pot, let's party. All right. When you start talking to angels and demons and quoting scripture, you've done move. Listen, that woman in the Bible that's demon possessed, and Paul coming to them. You know what she done? Oh, these men are the great power of God. Remember that? They immediately, I believe she recognized there was something in me that wasn't like them other guys walking around that motel. Listen, we ought to thank the Lord that we know the truth. I never heard such rambling in my life about the beast and the coming and the try. That it all People like that have it all tangled up like spaghetti and they had all these scriptures just running together and it don't make no sense. There she is. I about had a heart attack. Who was that? Brian! Is that Michelle? Does it say Michelle on your phone? It does. Michelle, from, you better leave people like that alone, brother. I mean, I know you're lonely and everything, but you better get away from her. I told him to go out and witness to her. I really did. I didn't want to have to deal with it. But listen, 
we don't realize how thankful we ought to be to just know the truth. Just to know the truth. When is the last time you got down on your knees and just raised your hand and said, Lord, thank you for the truth of salvation, the Bible? You know the Koran, don't, don't, can't, and won't predict the future? It can't. Muhammad, Muhammad didn't even write the Koran. He couldn't write. He was illiterate. Couldn't even read and write. Dictated it to somebody and they wrote it down. Hey, you ought to thank the Lord. We've got a Bible. And the great salvation. I, I actually got a burden. So many people want to be a missionary. I tell you what you can do to be a missionary. Figured it out this week. We need some people that will surrender to be a missionary to the cheap motels of America. I'm serious. I mean that. It won't cost you nothing. You go any cheap motel in any big city and get a room on Friday night and you can witness all day and all night long and not spend a penny of gas or nothing. They're just There's a guy laying out behind there, down below it, laying down there under a sign like this. Just laying down there like this. And I was late for church. I was going to try and talk to him and I felt bad for not stopping and talking to him. So they're out of it. You want to do a mission work? Don't go to a nice motel. That's where the big shot centers are. Same sin. They just got more money to sin with. So, like you say, that old, you see that man down there? He's gone to the dogs. See that man in a nice motel? He's gone to the devil. Same thing. Same thing. They just got more money to sin with. But you go to a cheap motel, take you a handful of tracks, you can witness to your heart's content. And thank the Lord for his goodness of salvation. I wanted to give you this little thought tonight, and I'm through, about how here on this Father's Day, we ought to thank the Lord for his goodness, for our family, for our health. I might fall over out there in the parking lot tonight, but I'll tell you one thing, God's given me many, many years of being able to be, to walk, to move, to talk, to eat. You ever thought about what a blessing it is to eat? Just to be able to eat? A lot of people can't. Say that they're fed through a tube. Lots of them, thousands of them. The Lord's been good to you. He's been good to you. Malachi, come up here just a second. I want to do something I, I don't know if I've ever done. Play that song, God's Been Good. And I want us to sing it as a group tonight. Not choir, not special. Just sing it as a, as a group. Lately I've been looking back along these winding roads to the old familiar marker of the mercy he's bestowed. Let's sing that tonight, okay? Let's stand. Go ahead. Now you girls will have to lead us. Sing it loud where we can hear you. And we'll join in with you tonight. Come on, Terry. May I have been looking on me Amen Come on now Come on lady More than I can say No other word Can say Let's say it to him tonight Let's just enjoy it Say God's name in my life, hey, I've been blessed beyond my wildest dream as I go to sleep each night. Turn it up, y'all. Have a hat. Come on, girl. Woo. By my side, he's always stood through it all. Oh, God's been good. Hey, Amen. Get his mic on there. Time. Amen. Come on now. Brandon, you have to come sing that part, Brother Brandon. Amen. Amen. Sing it now. He can't sing. Had teeth cut out. God has been my father. Amen. Amen. Held down upon undeserved. Everybody say, God's been good. Lord, baby.
been good to me, y'all, in my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Woo! Had my share of hard times by my side. He's always stood through it all. God's been good. Come on now and play it, brother. God has been my father. Yes, he has. My Savior Amen. and my friend. His love is my beginning. Amen. And his love will be my end. And I could spend forever trying to tell you everything. Yeah, I could tell you everything he's done. Lord of God, but he's been good to me. He's been good to me. Woo! Amen, everybody. God's been good. Crank it up now. Let's praise him tonight in my life. Has he been good to you? Praise him a little bit. Bless me on my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I had my share, I've had some hard times. By my side, he's always good. It all. One more time. One more time, everybody. God's been good. Praise Him tonight. Praise Him in my life. Hallelujah. I've been blessed beyond my wife. Yeah, come on, boys. Pray. Go to sleep. Come on, boys. Pray. Amen. I've had my share of hard times by my side. He's always through it all. Got some praying tonight. Got some praying, teenagers, one more time. God's been good. Say, in my life. Say, I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always through it all. Softly tonight. He's still praying while he plays softly. God's been good, ain't he? Lord have mercy. Here we are sitting here in the foothills of North Carolina. Beautiful weather. Nice, cool, air conditioned building. Everyone has got Bible. Everyone of us eat today. I'm sure everybody in here eat today unless you was fasting. You didn't have to. I mean you could have. What a blessing. What a blessing. God's been good. God's been good. Somebody just want to brag on him right quick. Okay. Somebody want to brag on him right quick. We're going to go. Amen, sister. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Isn't that something, y'all? <laughs> Woo! Glory to God.
Amen. 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 Lord have mercy. What a blessing. Isn't that something? Amen. That's great. Come from, come from an alcoholic family, and look how the Lord's brought her. Would anybody believe that she was 69 years old and told it in front of people? That's, that's rare, man. That's rare. A woman don't tell her age. <laughs> you don't look it. You, I'm telling you, I'd never believed it, would y'all? Isn't that something? Amen. The Lord been good to you. You're like me. You didn't get preserved. You got pickled. Amen.